says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us fixing our eyes on Jesus the pioneer and perfecter of faith for the joy set before him he endured the cross scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so you will not grow weary and lose heart. The title lesson here tonight simply, Fix Your Eyes on Jesus. You know, the Bible here says there's a great cloud of witnesses. Right now as we speak in the heavenly realms, there are people watching us Run this Christian race. And the Bible says as you run, you got to fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Why is that? Because if you fix your eyes on anyone else, you'll find imperfection. If you fix your eyes on Moses, you'll find anger. If you fix your eyes on Noah, you'll find a drunkard. If you fix your eyes on Peter, you'll find a coward. If you fix your eyes on Jesus Christ, you'll find a perfect God that could run this race. Let's fix our eyes on Jesus. If you don't know my name, my name is Olinka Olubade Oredola. But you call me Ole for short, and I leave the mighty Southland region, man. But it's great today not just to be with the young Metro Coast, man. But it's also great to be with the outer cities tonight. I'm fired up to get into the Word of God. I mean, for those who went to Mexico, what a fun time it was, was it not? But some of us are paying for it, including me, amen? amen. Uh, if, you know what I mean, if you don't know what I mean, find me in the fellowship. Uh, but it's been an awesome time, and we're two weeks out for most of our campus before they start. And when campus starts, it's go time. It's time to be about our purpose. Well, that time is every time. But we know when campus starts, it's time for us to blitz and campaign. And I was thinking, what do we need to focus on before we start this race? It's simple. Jesus. I got four short points for you here tonight. First of all, who here wants to do something great? Who here wants to do something great for God? Who wants to live to their maximum potential? Okay, if you want to be great, we got to do our first point. Fix your eyes on his suffering. You said you want to be great. You know, Kobe Bryant once said, and I know Jacob, not Jacob, but Jacob's wearing a retro Kobe Bryant jersey right there. He said a lot of people want to be great, but they're not willing to make the sacrifices necessary to achieve greatness. They have other concerns, whether important or not, and they spread themselves so thin. That's totally fine, after all. Greatness is not for everybody. But I know here tonight at Campus Devo, every single one of us want to be great. But it's going to take some great suffering. Let's turn to Isaiah 53. Fix your eyes on his suffering. Heal, please. We're going to focus on Jesus here tonight. Here in Isaiah 53, this was a prophecy of Christ about 700 years before he was born. It talks about, in detail, the Passion account. Verse 3 of Isaiah 53. Bible reads, he, talking about Jesus, was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering 
and familiar with pain, like one from whom people hide their faces. He was despised, and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, we are healed. Come on, come on. What's amazing, this passage talks about Christ. And it's a prophecy of the Passion account. Nice. That one day, Jesus would come down to earth, give up his divinity for a brief moment, and be separated from God so that our sins could be forgiven. Well, it's amazing about the Bible here says that he was a man that was familiar with pain, a man who was familiar with suffering. And the Bible says in 1 Peter 2, us as disciples, we should follow in his footsteps. So as disciples, we understand that we worship an amazing God. He is the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the God of all the universe. And he is great, but he went through great suffering. Come on, yeah. let's go, great, bro. I think there's no doubt that all of us want to do something great for God. Yeah. But who wants to suffer for God? And the Bible here says that God was familiar with suffering. And I think sometimes for us, we could not want to be familiar with it. As Job 36 says, beware of turning to affliction as opposed to, or turning to sin, as opposed to sinning in your affliction. Wow. wow. There can be times where we see the cross that God wants us to bear, but instead of fixing our eyes on it, we start to fix our eyes on distractions. Wow. We start to fix our eyes on things that could distract us from the cross. Yeah. Even for us, before we became disciples, that's, that's what we did. We fixed our eyes on the world, fixed our eyes on impurity, yeah. fixed our eyes on immorality. Fix our eyes on things that we knew were not of God, but we thought it was going to fulfill us, but it only broke God's heart. Yeah. It only broke us even more, and because of that, God had to die. But it is a call for us. We want to do something great. We have to be like our God and be familiar with suffering. Let's turn to Romans 5. Come on. You better lay us out, bro. Come on. You know, most churches, they'll tell you, you know, God just wants to have you, you know, you get a unicorn and sunshine, rainbows, and no suffering. God wants to give you a good life. Now, we understand God does want us to have a life to the full, man. But you're going to go through trouble in life. And we, we got to prepare our hearts before this semester starts for all the suffering that's going to happen. But I think sometimes when we go through suffering, want to have a good attitude about it. Oh. <laughs> Instead of just going through it, we want to complain. Oh. We want to get down. Oh. We want to quit. Oh. Yeah. Just imagine, what if Jesus put on the cross? Oh. Oh. None of us will have salvation. And the Bible said that he learned obedience through suffering and became an eternal source of salvation yeah. for all mankind. Yeah. And God wants you as well and me to become a source of of salvation for all the people on our campus. Come on, bro. But the way it's going to happen is fixing our eyes on suffering. Come on. And I want to convince you here tonight that suffering is good. Yeah. That it's actually awesome. Yes. That the Bible says that it's an upside down kingdom. Yeah. So what was not good in the world has become good here in the kingdom. Yeah. What was good in the world yeah. actually is bad in the kingdom. Let me convince you. Romans 5, verse 3. All right. Convince us, please. Verse 3, the Bible says, Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings. Because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character. And character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame. Because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. You know, I love this passage because it gives you a mathematical equation that will not fail you. Ooh, yeah. Come on, bro. It says that sufferings on, produce perseverance. Okay. So you have to persevere through sufferings, and then you get something called character. Where all of us, before we got into the kingdom, were in the brackets of character. 
where just waking up early was a hard thing. Just, just showing up on time to class was a hard thing. I know for myself, just staying awake in class was a hard thing, even though I slept so much. We were in the bracket of character, but in the kingdom, God wants you to have character like Jesus Christ. And then it produces hope. Because then you can say, I've seen this before. I could persevere this time. But here's what the scripture says, it says glory in the suffering. Woo! That Greek word for glory is doxa, which means to take pleasure in. It means that you can have pleasure, have joy in the suffering. Because you know the hope, the perseverance, the character that it's going to produce. And one day, you're going to see God in heaven. It's not that bad. God disciplines us, and you have two different options, or three. The good option is to glory in it and yep. be fired up. The second option is to lose hearts. And then the third option is to take it lightly. <laughs> wow. You clean the room and you have a take it lightly or lose heart people. Yeah, yeah. I'm kind of a lose heart person. Where it's like, man, I had to disciple on this again, and it's just like, you, you know when someone loses heart in a deep time or the yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, they, they, their bones just leave and they're just done. <laughs> and then you think you like people who are just like, you know, like, like that meme, you know, like that little cartoon character when the house is buried, like, you know, like, this is not that bad. It's like, bro, your house is burning, everything is going, it's not fine, wake up, get out. But that's the option in order to be like Christ and actually be fired up. About Come on, bro. None of our crosses can compare to his. Yes. Wow. Because every single one of us sin. Wow. Right? right? We're all sinners. Right. Right. Jesus never sinned. Yeah. Wow. So his cross was unjust. Our cross, you can, you can make a case that, well, we kind of deserve this. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. When we don't embrace suffering, we stunt our growth. Yeah. Wow. And I believe we have to just, right now, I, I, I love to just get prepared for the worst. The worst is going to happen. Yes. 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 This semester, it's going to be awesome. Yes. Yeah. I mean, wow, the first half of the year was incredible. Yeah. yeah. God did amazing things. Yeah. How do I know? A lot of you who are sitting here right now weren't even here in January. Thank you. Oh. Fix your eyes on suffering. Because if you're surrendered to it, the devil can't get you. Right. Right. And right now, I believe the call for us is to see this scripture and apply it to our lives. Ask yourself tonight, have you been enjoying the suffering? I love it. Here's the thing. I mean, I'm not, I'm not a hypocrite. Like, I, there's times where I'm like, what the heck's going on, man? This, this is 
This is a lot. <laughs> but the thing is, that's why you got to go and pray. Get your heart right. Get in the word. And then when you see scriptures like this, you're like, you know what? I can obey it. I, too, can be like Christ and glory in my suffering. You know, there's once a story. Awesome, bro. Of a CEO who his people didn't really like him. Because he was a stickler and he was a hard man. One day he puts an email out and says, the man who has been holding us back in this company has died. And everyone's like, hey, man, well, that's, that sounds like, sorry for him, but it's not like good news for us. <laughs> and then they have a funeral for this man. The CEO gets a coffin, and the people, one by one, go up to it. And what he does, he puts a mirror in the car. One by one as they go and see with the sign, the man who's stopping us from being successful. Oh and they look at themselves. Oh my God. The point was, they were the people that was preventing the company from being successful. And I believe in the same way for us as disciples. When we go and embrace suffering, when we go and embrace the things of God, we are the only people that are holding ourselves back. It's not your disciples' fault. It's not your evangelist's fault. It's your fault. You're, you're the man. You're the drama. You're the guy. And God wants us to actually, yes, die, put ourselves in that coffin so that Christ can live with us and reign forever. I just want to challenge us here tonight. Is that okay? Can we, can we, can we, can we, can we challenge me for church? I want to challenge us here. Let's become the men and yeah. women of God that God wants us to be. Let's be done with the childish things. Let's be done with complaining. Grow up. God loves you. Stop going to the impurity when you get sad. It's childish. Stop, stop going to just, just terrible amount of discouragement when things don't go your way. It happened to Jesus. There's hope. We're going to see God one day in heaven. Let's become the men and women of God that God wants us to be. Amen? Point number two. Fix your eyes on his standard. Wow. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 11. <laughs> Come on, you know, I, I'm excited for the Denning Devo. Come on, brother. Okay. I think we're overdue for it. Some of y'all have been tripping about it. <laughs> but what, what's, what's amazing is, oh, I, know, I know a lot of y'all have some standards. I know some of the brothers got some, 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 some standards, uh, like a long list of a standard of a sister they want to be to. Oh. <laughs> Amen. I know the sisters saying amen, but I know some of the sisters are like that too. Amen. But you know who also has standards? God. And we got to fix our eyes on God's standards. 2 Corinthians 11. We're going to start off in verse 1. Give me an amen once you're there. Give me an amen once you're there. When you're actually there. Amen. Come on, Ole. Amen. Amen, bro. Amen. Second Corinthians 11, verse 1. Ah, uh, come on. Bob <laughs> says, I hope you put up with me in a little foolishness. Amen. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Dave. Just a little. <laughs> yes, please put up with me. I'm jealous for you with the God of jealousy. I promise you to one husband to Christ, mm. so that I might present to you, present you as a virgin to you. But I'm afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. Mm. For someone comes to you and preaches the Jesus other than the Jesus we preached. Yeah. Or if you receive a different spirit, Lord Christ, from the spirit you received, or a different gospel from the one you accepted, you put up with it easily. Oh, no. Enough. No, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. Understand, Second Corinthians is actually the, fir the fourth letter written to the church in Corinth. Mm. This church was absolutely jacked up. Yeah. 
And Paul many times exhorts them. He's the one that planned the church, and most commentaries believe that it got up to 10,000. And over here, he's giving some final admonishments and exhortations before he closes out the letter. He says that don't forget the spirit and the gospel that you received. Because there will be and there were people in this church that call themselves super apostles, saying that they were rich and don't listen to Paul because he's poor and God wants everyone to be rich. And he said, if someone comes like that in the church, do not listen to them. They are satanic. And he says, don't put up with it at all. So it's amazing for most of us before we became disciples, whew, we put up with a lot of false doctrine. <laughs> I mean, I was a guy in the church. They lower down the, you know, the nice, they, they dim the lights, get some nice Christian rock, and just cry my eyes out. Like, but then the next day, the next day, all of them disappeared. Next day, all re- I'm cursing. Next day, I didn't read my Bible or pray. Come on, put up with it easily enough. That's the world we live in now. Yeah, come on, all that. Wrapped up in false doctrine. Have no idea standards. Like, hey, you want to be this? That's okay. You want to be that person? Who you are? That's cool for you. Good you want to be a captain? No problem. You, you were born that way. That's all right. But there's no standard. But there's a standard in the scriptures. And we know the standard as disciples. You must become a sold out disciple in faith and then get baptized for the forgiveness of your sins, and then only then do you see God one day. But the sad thing is that we didn't know that until a disciple came to us and studied the Bible with us. So I really want to encourage anyone, if you this is your first time here as a guest, thank you for worshiping with us. But we're all about the standard of Christ. And if this is, might be a little bit foreign to you, study the Bible yes. with the person who invited you out, and then you can see and fix your eyes on, on Jesus' standards. standards. Let's go. But we know from 1 Corinthians 3 that Jesus Christ is the foundation. Yeah. But it's up to us on how we want to build on that foundation. Yeah. We can build with wood, hay, or straw. Or we can build with gold, silver, and costly stone. Oh, yeah, yeah, I get that. Come on. But it says that one day the fire is going to come and test what oh. you are building. So it behooves us to build with gold, silver, and costly stones. And I believe that's what Paul is also talking about here. The lowercase s spirit. Ooh. The spirit of the church. Isn't it amazing to come and be a part of a fired up church? Yes, it is. Can, can you come to Devo and feel safe? Yeah. Come to Devo and see the love? Yeah. Come to Devo and understand that the word of God is going to be preached? Come and if now. someone came up here and said something uh, that is not true or, or is said something that's false doctrine, that oh. person would be dealt with. Like tonight, if I said something that's false doctrine, I know Tyler's here is going to come after my neck. Uh, and and, and Ty, Ty, Tyler's really good at that. Uh, <laughs> but you, you could, and, and I know Mike would be like, hey, bro, like, that was all right. And we're going to deal with this. Yeah. So we're standing on the shoulders of men and women who bled for this, who, who sweated for this. I'm sweating up here right now. Who, who, who cried for this? Yes. Like, it, it was so awesome going to Mexico City. And it was, it was, it, it really was like a mini GLC. For those yeah. of you who don't know what a GLC is, it's a global leadership conference. Si, senor. Where on. all of our churches from all around the world, part of a worldwide movement, and we come together once a year to worship God together. And it was, it was incredible just to get to talk to some heroes in the faith. Uh, and, to, and to see them, and I was, I was so grateful to be encouraged by the family there in Mexico Come on. City. Yeah. You know, I had got a chance to have a conversation with uh, Michael Williamson, who leads the church over there in London. Wow. And I was blown away. He was, uh, he was talking about the story over there in Portland. So we understand that our church has, has its origin in Portland, Oregon. Come on. Um, and we know that, that, that Kip started the movement there. But Mike was there before Kip was there. Come on, Mike. And he saw a church that was fired up. 300 disciples go down to 25 basically overnight. And what's amazing that Mike said, he said that he saw people just lose focus on any type of standards. Yep. Get to understand what we have here, is, it's, it's so fragile. Yeah. It doesn't have to be here even by the end of this year. 
It's up to us to be like those who came before us. To fix our eyes on a standard and not to put up with any other Jesus than the Jesus in the Bible. Because the Jesus you preach is going to be the Jesus lived out in the church. And we preach all of Jesus. Not just the Jesus that we like. Not just the one that painted the lamb and has a, the long blonde hair and the blue eyes Jesus. That's not the Jesus we preach. We preach the Jesus of the Bible. And there's a standard and a spirit that's protecting the campus and protecting the church. Yes. There's four, there's four gospels I want to put before you today. Okay. Four challenges from this book. One, as the campus experience, we've got to continue the gospel of hard work. Yes. Yeah. Hard work, I think people get weird about it, it's not filling a quota. It's being compelled by the love of Christ, as our Lord said, that they're harassed and helpless. Come on, Ole. And he says that, have compassion and pray for the workers, because the workers are few. Think about this room. We have people who are working over there at USC. Okay. People working over there at UCLA. Okay. People working over there at Fullerton. Okay. At, at UCR. Okay. At Long Beach State. Okay. Think about the population of those campuses. Yeah. And look at the room. Yeah, it's real, bro. Good point. Are not the workers few? Yes. How much hard work is it going to take? Here's the thing. It took hard work for all of us to get into the kingdom. Yeah. Now it's time for us to pay it back. If someone doesn't want to work hard for God, there's something wrong with them. The love of God, the grace of God has not hit their heart. That's right, bro. Come on. We don't believe we're Free, saved by work, but we believe that we're saved to work. Yeah. So we got to keep the gospel on, of Ole. hard work. Lay it out, bro. Number three, the gospel of family. Wow. There we go. We love God and we love each other. Yep. It's awesome to be here. I mean, I, I love Matthew. I love Mike. I love Nate. I love Tyler. I love Steven. And, you know, I remember even being, I was, I was roommates with Nate Pavone. Uh, let, me, let me tell you about that experience. <laughs> fix your eyes. Fix, fix your eyes. You, know, you guys in the South, that you have an awesome evangelist right now, let me tell you what. We, You're welcome. It wasn't always awesome. <laughs> I'm just joking. Nate, Nate was an incredible brother. Nate uh, <laughs> <laughs> is an incredible brother. He died. He died. He died. He he died. died. He got but we're, we're family. We got to keep a God of a family. Yeah. Like the people in your region, the people even that are in the church. Yeah. This is not just. We don't come to church. This is not like this for the churchgoers. This is the family of God. And we kind of build with the gospel of family. Thirdly, the gospel of leadership. Here's the thing. Not everyone is going to be in a full-time ministry. And that's, that's not, that would not be a good church if everyone's in a full-time ministry because who's going to pay the full-time ministry people? But we're all disciples of Jesus. Yeah. And let me ask you this. Was Jesus a leader? Yes. Uh -oh. Was Jesus a leader? Yes. Okay. If you're now a disciple of Jesus, that means you're also a leader as well. Oh. Got so on our campuses, we got to be the lead. You got to go to the campus with your head on high, chest out, confident, that you have the Holy Spirit, not shy, not scared. We got to kill that introvert, extrovert thing. Come and, on, bro. And, 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 and atheists made that. We're not introverts, extroverts. We're disciples of Jesus Christ. Just think about it. If Jesus was in your class, what would he do? If Jesus was in your workplace, what would he do? If Jesus was in your campus, what would he do? Everyone will know about the gospel. When they killed Jesus in the first century, they thought that it was just over. But then they saw 120 more. What could this room do if everyone just buy into the gospel leadership? Come on, bro. That it's not just up to your Bible talk leader to make it happen. Yeah. It's not up to your evangelist to make it happen.
fruitfulness right. is for everybody. Yeah. It doesn't say be fruitful to prove yourself to be an evangelist. It says be fruitful to prove yourself as a disciple. Wow. We're leaders. We got to keep that gospel. Finally, fourth one. The gospel of no limits. Yes. That was the title. Sin, what is it? Sin limit, limit, limitis? My, my Spanish is terrible. It, it was very humbling going to Mexico. I had to, I had to rely on Regine the whole time. Because she, she, she speaks Spanish. So it was very humbling for me. I was like, babe, can, can you talk to that guy? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> My wife is awesome. She did a great job. Uh, but the, the gospel of no limits. When you have no limits, there's nothing to be afraid of. Yep. So God wants us, God, the Bible says that the end of the matter is greater than the beginning. So that means from the scriptures, from God himself, he wants the second half of the year to be even greater. The only thing that can stop it is you and me. Yeah. Yep. If we put limits on what God can do and limit our expectation, then we'll limit God. Yep. Yeah. But if we see that God's incredible, he can do immeasurably more than we can ask for or imagine, and we have no limits in the hard work, no limits in our love, no limits in our discipline, then we're going to see God do Go even away. greater things on, in the on. second yeah. half of the year. I want to challenge us to fix our eyes on the standard. Let's, we got to protect this. Yes. And it's up to you. Come on. Because we, we want to see a church here that's vibrant to give God glory. Come on, bro. Amen. And that's my third point. Fix your eyes on his glory. Come on, bro. Let's go to John 15. Let's go. Wow. Let's go, bro. Let's go, Ole. Shush. Great job. There's another one. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. John 15. Let's go. In verse 1. This is awesome. Lay it out. Fix your eyes on his glory. This is fun, bro. Thank you. Do you think? Come on. Come on. No? Come on. John 15, verse 1. Give me a minute once you're there. Amen. The third point fix your eyes on his glory. Amen. Fourth book of the New Testament. Amen. 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 Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown to the fire, and burned. If you remain in me, my words remain in you. Ask whatever you wish, and it'll be done for you. Wow. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Wow. Fix your eyes on his glory. Wow. It's amazing here. It talks about how God is the Father, he's the gardener. He cuts off wow. every branch that bears no fruit. Wow. The thing about Fall aways. Mm. I have a conviction from this passage that God cuts people off. Yeah. It says those who do not produce fruit. Now, what is this mysterious fruit? Well, if you continue to read in the past, he talks about fruit that will last. Right. So I believe the fruit that he's talking about is the fruit of making disciples. Yeah. Yeah. But you can't make disciples without the fruit of the Spirit. Because yeah. the religious world is about the fruit of the Spirit. Yes, of course it's the fruit of the Spirit, but it's also the fruit of making disciples. Yeah. The fruit of the Spirit is God's fruit. Us making disciples is our fruits. And it says that when we don't bear fruit, we'll be cut off. Mm. But when we do bear fruit, we still are growing away from the vine. 
Yeah. And God says he'll prune us to make us even more fruitful. Mm. And I believe the summertime is a pruning time. Yeah. yeah. Come on, bro. Where maybe sadly some of our friends and family members and or the beloved disciples didn't make it to the summer. Yeah. And for some of us, sometimes that can hurt our faith. Yeah. Like, wow, that, it's hard to see someone walk away from God. But we got to see the conviction from the scriptures right, Come yeah. on. and fix our eyes on God's glory. Yeah. Come on, bro. Us making disciples, us baptizing people, it's not about us. Right. Nope. It's not about our glory. Right. It's not about, hey, look what I can do. Right. It's about giving God glory. Yeah. Come on, bro. And I believe if we, all of us just focus and fix our eyes on God in that way, yeah. Yeah. that when we go on campus, we get in that huddle up, we're about to go share our faith, we're focused on that we want people to know yes. that there's a God at UCLA. Yes. yes. Yeah. When we go and share our faith, we want people to know there's a God over there at UCLA. Yeah. 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 We want people to know there's a God over there at Fullerton. Yeah. 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 We want people to know there's a God over there at USC. Oh, yeah. Yeah. At Dominguez Hills. At El Camino. That's what it's about. Yeah. Giving God glory. That's what it's all about. And we want to keep doing that till the day we die. Yeah. The Bible, the Bible says until we die, it's fruitful labor. Yeah. And then we find rest in heaven. Amen. And I think right now we've got to prepare our hearts. Come on, old lad. Prepare our minds yeah. for the sheer amount of work and glory we're going to give Come to on. God. Yeah. I t I, I'm so fired up about this. this, this, this oh, next oh, I'm so excited. Yes. God is, God is, he's, he's with us. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Only us can stop us. That's right. Nothing can stop us when we're with God. Yep. And we're, as the scripture says, very much fruit, proving we're disciples. Come on, Ole. It's amazing about this passage, though. It says, remain in me many times. Mm. See, bearing fruit is not the hard part. Remaining in Jesus is the wow. hard part. Wow. How's our quiet times going? Come on. Come on, bro. Because that's where it really starts, yeah. is having a joyful relationship with Jesus. When we have great times with God, we can't help but share our faith. That's right, bro. Because we have so much faith, it overflows. That's true. That's true. We even see that as a principle in the book of Luke. Yeah. Come on. We know John the Baptist's father, Zechariah, didn't believe the promises of God when he said, you're going to have a son. And what did God do as a curse? He muted him. Mm. Mm. You see, when you're faithless, you're muted. Oh. <laughs> you, 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 you can't get the words out there because there's no faith. But when you're faithful, you're remaining in Jesus, you have a conviction. If it's not the 50th person, it's not the 100th person, it's not the 1500th person, it's not the 17, the 2000th person I shared with, but one of these people yeah. are gonna become a disciple of Jesus. Oh, yeah. Because I have faith in giving God glory. I mean, it's pretty awesome. Over 270 baptisms, mm. over 50 restorations. Mm. Wow. We want to we take it higher because yep. it's not about the LA's church glory. Yeah. No. Nope. It's about giving God glory. Come on. Yeah. And I believe we worship a God that likes to show off. Yes. 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 <laughs> Focus on Bible studies. 
Yeah, it's true, bro. Yeah. It's a time for us to really have a great expectation of setting up a bunch of Come on, bro, oh, bro. And I think sometimes we, we, we diminish the, the glory of just setting up a Bible study. Yeah. yeah. This is a total stranger, I know, <laughs> who's willing to sit with you and have coffee and talk to you about God. That's a, that's a glorious miracle. That's awesome. Every time we set up something, we got to be like, wow, that's awesome. We got to up the studies. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's time to see 60, 70, 80, Rachel, 90 studies yeah. in each of our campuses. Come on, bro. Let's go. I really want to challenge all the Bible talk leaders. Come on. Come on. To take it higher in your yeah. expectation. Come on. Yeah. Let's go. Because it's not about glorifying you. We're small. God is big. Come on. Yep. It's Come about on, glorifying God and fixing our eyes on God's glory. <laughs> As we focus on studies and baptize people, as I talked about earlier, it's time to raise up some leaders. Come on. Yep. It's time for us, like, if we haven't led a seeking God study, we'll get the vision. Yep. One day, there's going to be a bunch of seeking God studies happening, and you're going to be the guy. <laughs> but you want to be the man on the bench on the bench ready to go. Yeah. Not the guys like, hey, coach said, let's go. And you're like, you know what I mean? Like, no, I don't know. No, you want to be nope. ready. Come on, bro. Come, Come on, Ole. It was encouraging today. Karina led her first disciple. Let's go. <laughs> I mean, she just baptized a couple months ago. Oh, my God. Oh, that hurts. And I, 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 I just, I just think we got to have a great expectation. You have the Holy Spirit. The same spirit that your Bible talk leader has. Yeah. The same spirit that your evangelist has. Come on. Leading the study is not just for the evangelist. Come on, bro. Could you imagine? Leading the study is what it means to be a John Corbett fighter. You know what I mean? From a seeking God study all the way to town and talk. Could you imagine if every single Let's person go. in our campus ministry? Have the confidence to lead all the studies. Yes. Because one thing to know the studies, but another thing to preach the studies. Yeah. And it's one thing to understand different people. Because you can't be a robot and this thing about with people. It's not cookie cutter. But what, what I want to put before you, you can do that. And, and you can do it this semester. Imagine seeing so many in this room at John 4. Come on. And I think that brings that culture back. I, don't, yeah, I, don't, I, I, just, I just don't hear it enough. Come on. Yeah, I don't, come when, on. when me, Nate, and Matt were in SF, we're, that's all we're talking about. Yeah. We want to be John Corbett. Why is that? Because it's about God's glory. Yeah. Yeah. If I knew how to lead a study, that, and Jason has to come, that means more people can be saved. Yeah. Yeah. There's a direct correlation to how many John Four disciples in a ministry to how many yeah. baptisms are going to be. Come on. Yeah, bro. And like I said earlier, we don't serve a God of small things, no. of big things. But who are going to be the people that are going to raise up to become John 4 disciples who are more so saved all around our camp? A final point. We already talked about his suffering. We talked about his glory. We talked about his standard. Finally, we got to fix point number four. Fix our eyes. On his reward. Wow. Wow. Let's go to Hebrews 11. Come on, bro. Good stuff. Fix, please. Just good stuff. In verse 6. Let's go, bro. Come on. Some stuff on a point. Fired up. Let's go, Come on. Hebrews 11, verse, verse 6. Bible says. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. See, God does not, he hates faithlessness. Wow. <laughs> Unbelieving is a sin. <laughs> That's Revelation 21. Wow. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists. That he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Come on, bro. What yeah. an encouraging yeah. passage. Yeah. Yep. When you earnestly, remember that seeking God study? Yeah. Psalm 119. Yeah. Blessed are those who seek God with all of their hearts. Yeah. 
The Bible here says that God wants to reward you. Yeah. One may ask, then, what is this great reward? Let's go to Genesis 15. Yeah. Okay. I know you're on the edge of your seats. You want to know what, what, what's, go, what's the reward? Well, reward? What's this great well. reward? Genesis 15 will teach us. Yeah. Come on. Genesis 15. Come on, babe. Oh. In, verse, in verse 1. All right. Go away. The Bible says, talking about Abraham becoming Abraham. After this, the, Lord, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. What's the reward? It's God. Come on. The reward's not the boyfriend. The reward's not the girlfriend. The reward is not the status. It's not the position. It's God. You know, Luke 10, I believe what happened in Luke 10 is going to happen this semester. Jesus sends out the 70, and they have a successful missionary trip. Come on, they drive bro. out demons, they heal the sick, and it was incredible, and they were fired up. Come on, bro. But then Jesus says, do not rejoice that you can do that. Rejoice that your name is written in the book of life. Our great reward is God, that right now if you're a sold out, baptized disciple, and died, you will see God in heaven. Are we far enough to go to heaven one day? That's the great reward. It's God. That is something no one can take from you. As long as you earnestly seek him. That's why it's our great reward. Come on, bro. And if we have the maturity, it takes maturity to think like this. True. The maturity that every day we wake up, we're fired up just to get into our Bible. Yeah. We're just fired up to pray to our God. Wow. Think about how miraculous prayer is. You're, you're talking out louder in your head, and, you're, and you believe that God is listening. Yeah. How much faith that takes. That's our reward, our relationship. I mean, I love my wife to death. She's the second best thing that happens to me after God. Come on, bro. It's, it's an amazing thing, but it's, it's, it's sprinkles. It's, it's, the, it's the, the cherry on top. Come on. Because there's no marriage in heaven. But in heaven, what we're going to see, we're going to see God. That's right. That's our great reward. Come on, man. Yeah. You know, it's awesome to celebrate seven years in the Lord. Wow. The past couple of days. <laughs> and, and I got you. We were traveling a bunch, so once we got back, back, got, got back home, I went on a prayer walk. And I was just thinking about it. Like, wow, like, seven years. Mm. Uh, feels, feels like 14. <laughs> 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 but I, I was just thinking about it even, even talking, I mean Seeing the people over there in Mexico Even seeing Tyler Shea here Who's been here for a long time uh, Seeing <laughs> Mature <laughs> um, Hearing people like Kip Benjamin It's like over 50 years Come on yep. 50, 50 years, two years bro. Come on where are we all going to be? <laughs> yes, come on, Ole. In the next four, five, ten years. Let's go. Think of all the teens. Where are they going to be for four, oh, five, ten years? Oh. Think of the person next to you. Where are they going to be in the next five, ten years? <laughs> Think about yourself. Where are we going to be? As long as we fix our eyes, Woo! come on, bro. We fix our eyes. <laughs> we fix our eyes on God as the reward. Come on, bro. Because some of us, we're running, we're running, and we just want to get that next thing. Oh. And then we get that next thing, we realize it didn't fulfill me. So we're running, we're running, we want to get that next thing. And we keep going, but you just don't understand. We're ready to see God one day. Yeah. He's our reward. Yeah. That's, the, that's the end that keeps you going. It's never going to go out. It's never going to stop. Yeah. 
the light is always going to be lit. Right. Come on. Fixing our eyes on God. Come on, bro. And our great reward one day. Come on, bro. Yeah. I can't wait to see all of us in heaven. Yeah. That's what I'm fighting for. There's people right now on our campuses that are praying for us to meet. Yeah. Isn't it amazing? Like, that's what I pray for. Like, I pray for someone to teach you the Bible. Yeah. Wow. And then Christian knows met me at PGU. There's some incoming freshmen that we can snatch them from the fire and the disgusting, grotesque things that come Yeah, come on, all that. Oh, right. The rampant immorality. The disgusting impurity. The terrible idolatry. Yeah. That all of us were wrapped up into that. Yes. Yeah. And they think their reward is getting a degree, a piece of paper. They think their reward is going to be making money. They think their reward is going to be going to be giving their body to some person who doesn't care about them. Wow. Yes. We can show them. We can show them what the real reward is. Oh, no. oh, no. Oh, no. It's not those things. The real reward is not the immorality. It's not the impurity. It's not the money. The real reward is found right here in the scriptures. It's our God. What day in heaven? Let's close down Revelation chapter 22. Oh. It never fails. They say some Revelation like, oh. It's just the book in the Bible. <laughs> Oh man, I, I'm, I'm, I'm still in age club. Find, find a better one. Uh, verse 1 of Revelation 26. Come on, bro. Come on. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come Bible says, the blast, bro. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, as clear as crystal. Flowing from the throne of God of the Lamb down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will serve him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. They will overnight. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light, and they'll reign forever and ever. Come on, bro. The title of our lesson was, Fix Your Eyes on Jesus. This scripture says, one day we will see his face. One day we're going to see God in heaven. Until then, let us run this race unhindered. Let us throw off anything that's entangling us. Let's throw off all the sin, and let's fix our eyes on Jesus. To God be the Come on!